To graph the function f of x is equal to e raised to the x plus 4 power minus 3, we want to first start by identifying the parent function. So if you can remember that the plus 4 and the minus 3 cause shifts for this graph, then what's left, what's remaining, is just the e to the x power. So y equals e to the x power is our parent function, and we'll start by working on graphing that function. So you might begin with x values from negative 2 to 2, as we usually do. And when we substitute in negative 2, that gives us e raised to the negative 2 power. Remember, negative exponents cause us to create a fraction. So this is 1 over e raised to the second power. And e, remember e, which is approximately, we say, about 2.7-ish, eh, approximately 2.7, this is like 1 over 2.7 squared. And I don't expect you to know what 2.7 squared is, nor do I expect you to know what 1 divided by 2.7 squared is. But we can just realize that this is going to be a very small number. It's going to be a small yet positive number. And the same is true for negative 1. e raised to the negative 1 power, which will become 1 divided by e, is also some small decimal. So again, I don't expect you to know these output values without a calculator. However, when we input 0, e to the 0 power we should know. e to the 0 is equal to 1. And e to the first power is approximately 2.7. So when we input 1, we should output approximately 2.7. So let's begin by plotting those two points, 0, 1 and 1 comma 2.7. You'll just estimate that value. And if we were to input 2, e to the second power, again remember that is approximately 2.7 squared, which if you did go to your calculator you could see that that's approximately 7.3. So we could go ahead and plot 2 comma 7.3. And since the base is e, and remember our base here is approximately 2.1, and since that base is greater than 1, then we expect this parent function to be an exponential growth function, which means it has all the characteristics of a regular exponential function. That means it has a horizontal asymptote, so we'll graph in the horizontal asymptote, which right now is the horizontal line, y equals 0. And then this function hugs the asymptote. It's very close to the asymptote. And then it grows exponentially. So this is the typical shape of exponential growth. Now we'll return to the function and take a look at the transformations that have occurred. So we have e raised to the x plus 4 power. So that is going to be a shift to the left 4. And then we have minus 3, and that is going to change our y values. So that is going to be a shift down 3. So I like to move the asymptote first. So our asymptote used to be the horizontal line y equals 0, but it is going to now be shifted down 3. So we have a new horizontal asymptote. So our horizontal asymptote is the horizontal line y equals negative 3 now that we've shifted down 3. Now we'll take each of our coordinates and shift them each left 4 and down 3. So starting with our y-intercept, which is currently here at 0, 1, if we go left, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then down 1, 2, 3, that puts my new coordinate at negative 4, negative 2. And now we'll do the same for our other coordinates, recognizing that these other two coordinates, they had decimal y values, so that's okay. We'll just continue to move them all left 4 and down 3, and we'll just have to estimate on our graph approximately where those points are going to be. 
So I'll move this coordinate left four and down three, which will put it approximately there. And I'll do the same for this third coordinate, left four and down three, which will put it approximately there. And then remember the basic shape is the same, so the graph is going to be very close to that asymptote, we call it hugging the asymptote, and then we're going to have that exponential growth that we expected because this was a base of E, and E is approximately 2.7, which is larger than 1. Let's go ahead and look at domain and range while we're at it. So the domain for this function, remember domain is all the possible x values, and you'll notice since x is in the exponent, we can input any value that we want. So our domain will be all real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. And our range, which are the y values, we go from, remember, lowest to highest. And because of that horizontal asymptote, the range will be negative 3 to infinity, but it will be a parenthesis on negative 3 because this function is never going to touch that horizontal asymptote. We'll never get an output of exactly negative 3, so we're not going to include negative 3 in our range.